Twelve Angry Men is a mesmerizing jury room drama directed by Sidney Lumet. The black and white film is actually an adaption of a television play by the same name that was written by Reginald Rose. He wrote Twelve Angry Men based on his own personal experience as a juror in a manslaughter case in early 1954. The work was first developed, then produced for the Studio One anthology television series, airing as a live CBS television production on September 20th, 1954. The drama was soon rewritten for the stage in 1955 under the same title. Now, when veteran actor Henry Fonda saw the successful television production, his total lack of producing experience didn't stop him from contacting the teleplay's author. Excited by what he had seen as high-quality material for a feature film, Fonda struck a deal with Rose to produce the picture. He, too, had realized the dramatic power stemming from his experience and agreed with Fonda that the potential for a great film was there for the taking. They covered the nearly $350,000 budget themselves. And thanks to the unexpected success of the earlier teleplay turned Hollywood hit called Marty, United Artists agreed to distribute the film. Sidney Lumet was recruited by Fonda and Rose to direct the film. And this was even though he was 33 years of age without a feature film on his directorial resume. He was still considered an experienced director, having worked in television since 1950. Twelve Angry Men would be his first feature film and the only producing credit ever for either Fonda or Rose. The film actually opens with the 12-man jury finishing up six days of testimony of a trial proceeding inside a New York courtroom. In an overheated room, the jury prepares to deliberate the evidence that was presented against an 18-year-old poverty-stricken youth who is accused of harming his father and causing his death. The judge has instructed them that if there was any reasonable doubt, the jurors would need to return a verdict of not guilty. But if found guilty, the defendant would surely receive the death penalty and that their verdict must be unanimous. At first, the evidence seems overwhelmingly convincing. One neighbor claims to have witnessed the boy assault his father Another claims to have heard the defendant threaten his father. The boy has a violent past, and the same type weapon owned by the defendant was found at the scene. Initially, the jurors appear to take the decision lightly, including one juror wanting to get to a baseball game. In a preliminary vote conducted by juror number one, all the jurors readily voted guilty except for juror number eight. He, being Henry Fonda, believes that there should be a little discussion before the verdict is made final, as juror number eight slowly and methodically discloses his questions and his doubts regarding the eyewitness accounts and the evidence. The other jurors, one by one, change their thinking in regards to the boy's guilt. Eventually, the defendant is found not guilty, and the jurors leave the courthouse. What makes the story so much more intriguing is the fact that the only juror determined to stand up to his peers and open up the possibility of the defendant's innocence is now not so sure himself that the boy didn't do it. He's not sure at all. He strongly believes and advocates, though, that anyone in such a situation should be entitled to some focused and serious consideration. Twelve Angry Men concludes with the jury agreeing that there is enough reasonable doubt 
to warrant an acquittal. The defendant is viewed as not guilty by a jury of his peers. However, the Rose script never reveals the truth behind the case. Did they save an innocent man from the electric chair? Did a guilty man go free? The audience is left to decide for themselves. Once Sidney LeMay was designated director of 12 Angry Men, he incorporated many of his proven habits and techniques. This included an intense rehearsal schedule and process. He had all 12 actors stay in the same room for several hours on end and do their lines over and over without even filming them. This went on for 14 days straight. He believed that this would give each of them a real taste of what it would be like to be cooped up in a room with the same people. He wanted to create a terrible amount of tension between these actors. And this was his first part of doing that. So when it came time to shoot, all the acting preparation had already been completed. This left the director and his crew to focus solely on the technical aspects of the film. The filming was scheduled to last 20 days, but it was finished in 19. Now this film is without a doubt a different kind of a courtroom drama because it is set almost entirely in the jury room. One barely gets a glimpse of the courthouse and its surroundings during the film's 95 minutes. The viewer is basically locked in this enclosed room with the deliberating jurors for 90 of the film's 95 minutes. In order for a film of this unusual nature to work, several key elements had to be met and work. The first and most obvious was the necessity for an excellent and intriguing script. When it comes down to it, 12 Angry Men is a film about a group of men sitting at a table talking. There are no highly dramatic sequences, awe-inspiring imagery, or breathtaking scenery that could pull the focus away from the conversation. It's solely the lines that the characters deliver that provide all the action and the suspense throughout the film. Without very talented actors, not even the best script in the world would have been able to pull this film off. Henry Fonda was the only big name movie star among the cast. Aside from Fonda, the ensemble of character actors was selected for their experience and expertise in the flourishing medium of television. With the likes of Martin Balsam, Lee J. Cobb, Jack Warden, Ed Bagley, Joseph Sweeney, George Voskovic, Robert Weber, Edward Benz, Jack Klugman, John Fiedler, and E.G. Marshall sharing the spotlight, the perfect cast was assembled. And according to Jack Klugman, each of them earned the same salary of $900 a week. Now the film's cinematographer, Boris Kaufman, and the director developed a distinct visual style and incorporated techniques to secure the much-needed dramatic of the film's aura and feel. In essence, what Lumet and Kaufman did was experiment with various camera angles, and they do this superbly. The director said that he shot the first third of the movie above eye level, he shot the second third of the movie at eye level, and the last third of the movie below eye level. And that way, towards the end, the ceiling appeared. Not only were the walls closing in, the ceiling was as well. The sense of increasing claustrophobia did a lot to raise the tension of the last part of the movie. He does an excellent job of this. He raised tension and suspense all through this movie. You feel like you're in this room and you can't get out. 
He also points out that in the final scenes, he shot it with the widest lens used in the entire movie, emphasizing the sense of release from the jury room. The director and the editor, Carl Lerner, used editing techniques as well to increase the tension. The movie begins with a lot of long, unbroken takes, often lasting a minute or more without a cutaway. As the conversations intensify, the cutaways become faster. The average shot length grows shorter. Whether someone consciously realizes it or not, the rapid editing increases one's sense of tension and anxiety until when things finally settle down and we can breathe again. Lumet's film directing debut is a masterful and unforgettable piece of filmmaking, possessing lasting quality and never-ceasing influence. It's no wonder that this film is still frequently shown in film schools around the world. Twelve Angry Men premiered April 10th, 1957, to widespread critical acclaim. However, the film was a box office disappointment in the U.S., but it did much better there internationally. The film was nominated for Academy Awards in the category of Best Director, Best Picture, and Best Writing Adaptation to a Screenplay. It lost to The Bridge on the River Kwai in all three categories. After 64 years, Reginald Rose's Twelve Angry Men remains a true American classic and continues to set the standards by which all jury room dramas are measured. Every verbal accolade imaginable has been attributed to this film, including the words masterpiece and perfect. It might be time for you to watch this timeless treasure again. Thank you so much for watching and will continue to chase the classics.